YouTube hosts 4.3 petabytes of data per day. On a scale, if you do the math, 1024 GB is equal to 1 terabyte and 1024 TB is equal to 1 petabyte. So if you do the math correctly, it's around 4,398,000 GB per day just a day. So if you want to understand how costly the storage has become all these days, see I was paying nearly 1700 rupees per year just for 100 GB. And if you look at the plans here, so per month you have to pay 9700 rupees just to get 30 TB of data. And YouTube is not charging any rupees or anything from any of the content creators to upload any videos. And they are uploading 4.3 petabytes of data per day. How is this even possible? And if you see YouTube has came around 2005 and from 2005 till 2024, I have never seen YouTube getting crashed or going down. And YouTube never runs out of storage. I mean, at this pace, 4.3 petabytes of data per day and YouTube is not getting runs out of storage. How is this even possible? So is there a limit for this? Or in future maybe, YouTube will charge content creators for uploading videos? Now how the hell YouTube is handling this much of storage without charging even a penny from content creators? And how YouTube is never going out of storage after this much of data is uploading per each day? And in this video, we are going to answer every question and there is a very interesting topic at the end of the video. So don't miss, please watch the video till the end. So now to the first question, how YouTube is managing this much amount of data? So according to few stats, YouTube currently has 15 exabytes of storage. As I said, 1024 GB is equal to one terabyte and 1024 terabyte is equal to one petabyte and 1024 petabyte is equal to one exabyte. So looking at this space, per 4.3 petabytes of data per each day, it will take around 232 days to fill one exabyte. So at this math, if you do the math correctly, it will take around 10 years to fill all the 15 exabytes of data storage that YouTube has currently. So does YouTube have to buy another 15 exabytes of storage after 10 years? Are they going to build a new server farm? I'm not sure. To build one data center, a big server farm, it costs billions of data because to build a server farm, you need a land. And when I say land, it is not a small one. It, it takes millions of square feet to just build a server farm. And they have to give the electricity to all the servers that they are maintaining. And that's a lot of electricity bill. And if you look at all these contributing factors to build a server farm, it takes a lot of money. But YouTube is not poor. It has billions of dollars to build it. And as we discussed before, this content creation in this free YouTube platform is going exponentially. It is never going to stop. So, and this data, this 4.3 petabytes of data is going to only increase in the future days. It will never decrease. And it is going to take a lot of money and lot of maintenance into this just to build a server farm. But I'm not sure YouTube is going to build an another server farm after every 10 years. And anyway, YouTube has a billions of dollars and they can build hundreds of data centers around the world. But it is not the problem. How long are they going to keep building these data centers if this is growing at a very fast pace? And as it takes a lot of dollars to build a data centers, this explains why we have to watch an ad for every three minutes and every five minutes while we are watching a YouTube video. <laughs> and I think at this pace, YouTube is going to come up with a very clever solution in the future to solve this storage problem. And we are going to discuss about that solution at the end of the video. So please don't skip the video, watch till the end. And for the second point, how YouTube is never going out of storage and how there is always availability around the world. So currently YouTube is storing all of its data in a data centers, so which is a physical data center. So let's say a natural calamity like earthquake or tsunami has occurred. What happens to that? What happens to that data? YouTube is going to shut down? I don't think so. Because every YouTube video is going to get replicated at each of the data center around the world. So even let's say if the data center in Mumbai has been destroyed by a tsunami or an earthquake. So there will be another data center in Chennai or Hyderabad which will rescue the problem of availability. So even if it one goes down, there will be another data center which will serve you. Now what about the storage? We have already discussed it costs so much to store a video. So now YouTube follows this clever way where the popular content like the videos from the popular content creators are stored in a readily available servers. So you can think it is like an SSD and it is very fast. Less popular content will be stored in a cold line storage. You can think it is like an HDD. There will be less people watching those videos. So these kind of videos will be stored in a cold line storage and this decreases 
so much of cost, performance and also latency. So this is how YouTube is never getting out of storage and they're never getting crashed. Now as the question arises before, is YouTube going to build another data center for every 10 years? So to solve this issue, YouTube is looking into a very interesting topic or a very interesting technology called as DNA storage. That doesn't mean that YouTube is going to store data inside our DNA, but not exactly, but it's kind of the same, but I'll explain you in detail. DNA data storage is an experimental technology where the digital data, zeros and ones, which is a binary data, which is also called as digital data, is converted into a sequences of DNA molecules. So that DNA inside a human body has a natural ability to store complex amounts of data for a very long period of time. So if you don't understand what is zeros and ones and what is digital data, what is binary data, you can check out this video and I'll put the video link in the description as well. So, so how this DNA storage works is the digital data, zeros and ones, are converted into a sequence of nucleotides of DNA. So there are four nucleotides in DNA. One is adenine and second is thiamine and cytosine and guanine. So which is represented as A, T, C and Z. So each nucleotide can store two bits of data that is zero or one. So adenine stores zero zero, thiamine stores one one, cytosine stores zero one and guanine stores one zero. So now this binary data is converted into a sequence of nucleotides which is A, T, C and G. Now these nucleotides are synthesized into an artificial DNA using a chemical process inside a lab. So these DNA strands can be stored in a test tube as well and these can be stored for a long term preservation. Fine we have stored this binary data using some chemical processes into DNA and we are storing it. But how to read it? It's very simple. So just how you engineered this digital binary data of zeros and ones into DNA, you just need to reverse engineer this DNA into original data, which will give you the original video or photo. Anyway, but what is the use of this DNA storage? Can it solve the problem of storage? Yes, it can. Because the very first important thing about this DNA storage is it can be stored in a cool place for a very long period of time with less maintenance and with less cost. And now what about the storage? How much? amount of DNA is required to store let's say 4.3 petabytes of data. So now forget about 4.3 petabytes of data. Even in a single gram of DNA you can store 215 petabytes of data. So if you put in that way to store 15 exabytes of data which Google currently has in its storage capacity it just needs 70 grams of DNA. That's it, 70 grams. So what I'm trying to say is, you can store all the videos in the YouTube in a dairy milk sized DNA. In a dairy milk sized DNA. What? 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 Yeah. So this makes our DNA storage a promising way to the big tech companies like Meta and YouTube who stores billions of data and billions of photos and videos inside the data centers. While this DNA storage is still in research process, but it comes into the production if it is coming to the real life. This might solve huge problems which are faced by big tech companies like Meta, YouTube, Snapchat and Discord. So they store billions of data in some data centers and they cost so much and they have to maintain it so much and they have to pay lots of electricity bills just to maintain these data centers. But if this DNA storage comes into the production, I think it might solve and remove all the problems inside the world regarding the storage solution. And if you like this video and you found something valuable inside this video, please consider subscribing and liking the video. As we are closing, I have a very interesting fact to tell you. So I have asked Google how much amount of data, not YouTube, not Meta. I asked what is the total amount of data present in the current world. So it said it is around 120 jettabytes and one jettabyte is equal to nearly 1000 petabytes. So this is a very huge amount of data. So I did the math and I checked how much amount of DNA is required to store all the amount of data present in the current world. So interestingly, the answer is it is around 558 kgs of DNA is required to store all this data. And it is just a size of a small car. How beautiful is this? I mean, I mean, if a car sized DNA can store 120 jettabytes of data, imagine how astronomical amount of data that we can store in a thousand square feet data center and everything is filled with DNA. Wow, what a scene! Wow, what a scene!
Yes. And if you like this video and if you found something valuable in this video, please consider subscribing and please let me know in the comments what do you think about this DNA storage. And if you are interested in knowing about this more groundbreaking science technologies, please subscribe and follow. See you in the next video. Bye bye.